Hello everyone. Let's continue our discussion on setup timing analysis and let me uh, bring up on over here our original slide. Okay, so this was the condition that we have arrived to. We said that the combinational delay should be less than the clock period minus the setup time. So this was th this was after bringing one of the practical scenario onto the onto the equation. Okay, so let's try to move on and bring in more practical scenarios. The next one that we'll be talking about is about something called as jitter. So what happens is this clock this clock is been is been created by a pll by a, a phase log loops or there is some clock source that is present over here so that clock source is expected to send the clock signals at exactly 0 t 2t and uh, and all those time periods okay but the clock circuitry that is being built over here or the or, or the phase log loops basically any clock source which is present over here which is sitting over here that's again based on or that's again made on some real chip on on some real circuitry it has got some wires it has got some variations it has got some it has got some positive and negative variations so that clock source might or might not be able to generate a clock period which pro which provides a clock edge exactly at 0 nanosecond or which provides a clock edge exactly at t nanosecond so that clock source might might have got its own inbuilt variation and due to that it might provide a clock edge which can come exactly at 0 or somewhere before 0 or somewhere after 0 and similarly the clock edge at t nanosecond the second clock edge that the clock source sends to the uh, sends to the circuitry that can arrive at t nanosecond or before t nanosecond or somewhere after t nanosecond the variation will be very minimal but there is an amount of variation and that variation is basically because of the inbuilt variation of the clock generation clock clock source generation okay so that's basically called as a jitter and there is a temporary variation of the clock and as a result of that there is a temporary variation of the clock period for example if let's say the, the, there there was some uh, there was some uh, func variation in the in the clock source or the pll that is supplying the clock the PLL is basically a circuitry that generates the clock period, that generates the required clock period. Okay, and because of its because of its inherent variations inside the PLL, it sends a clock edge at at so let's say at this edge, not at zero, but at this edge to the launch flop, and the next edge that the PLL sends to the capture flop is at this particular edge and not at one nanosecond. So initially the period was from zero to t, and now it has shrinked from this point to this point and which is definitely less than one nanosecond so this temporary variation of and this is this is a very less variation but this still accounts for accounts for failure of the for, for failure of the circuits and the reason is because the combinational delay that we have analyzed this circuit for was kept as less than t minus s but now the combinational delay has to be the combinational delay requirement becomes even more stringent because of because of this kind of variations and those variations are captured on a term called as jitter jitter is referred to as temporary variation of the clock period okay and as a result of that this has to be modeled somewhere in this particular equation only because there is no other way to control the control the non idealities of the of the pll so to, to to capture or to model the non idealities of the pll let's try to do it over here itself and let's try to bring this particular equation to a more real scenario so initially we had like combinational delay should be less than the uh, the, the clock period minus the setup time now let's try to bring out one more parameter to model the jitter or to model this particular temporary variation of the clock and let's club this variation and this variation onto a single parameter called as uncertainty and let's bring it over here okay so now your clock period your your combinational delay which was supposed to be less than t minus s it was supposed to be less than t minus s and now it will be less than t minus s minus su su is the setup uncertainty because we are doing a setup timing analysis things are different for the whole timing analysis because in that case there is only a single edge that comes at the launch and the capture flop so this can be a more relaxed we'll we'll come to that in some time from now but in the setup timing analysis since the, the since a different edges goes to the launch and capture flop and as a result of that that, that there will be different jitter values for the launch flop and the capture flop clock edges and as a result of that the window looks big, a bit bigger over here and as a result of that now the combinational delay should be less than t minus s minus setup time minus setup uncertainty okay so if you try to bring into some real numbers over here the if the 
so if you try to bring in real numbers over here so your your uh, the, the clock period of 1 nanosecond and setup time of 10 picosecond and uncertainty of 90 picosecond your combinational delay requirement becomes t minus s minus su which is 1 nanosecond minus 10 picosecond minus 90 picosecond which comes to roughly around 0 0.9 nanosecond so this is your new combinational delay requirement okay so this is one of the one of the next practical scenarios that we brought into the picture now let's move on and bring into some more real more real and practical scenarios the next is the real clocks so let's now try to bring into build the clock tree and do a timing analysis with real clock so with real clocks things things the circuitry looks a bit different so initially if the circuit looked something like this and the clock tree was ideal now the clock tree will look something like this will have buffers will have the will the clock will now the clock edge will now go will now reach this launch flop and the capture flop through a set of buffers and wires and these are real buffers and wires okay so if the initial equation looked something like this now your equation the commercial delay requirement since we are looking into real clocks the, the this particular commercial delay or this particular clock delay also has to be taken into consideration okay so now what happens is this particular clock edge which is at zero for example the clock at zeroth clock edge it, it was the, this particular clock edge was supposed to reach the launch flop clock end point at zero nanosecond but now because of this buffers in the place this clock edge will not reach at zero nanosecond but it will reach at zero plus one plus two buffer delay okay so so now your conventional delay initially was theta and the requirement was theta should be less than t so let's try to modify this one by one so let's try to bring up this this one first your clock network delay your your clock edge at, at the zeroth clock edge which was supposed to reach reach at zeroth time period at launch flop it will now reach at one plus two so your theta is your conventional delay and one plus two is the clock network delay is the launch flop clock network delay okay and similarly the clock period the clock edge which was supposed to arrive capture flop clock endpoint at t nanosecond it will now no, it will not arrive at t but it will arrive at 1 plus 3 plus 4 nanos uh, plus 4 buffer delay okay so it's t plus 1 plus 3 plus 4 the clock the clock will send the clock the, or the pll or this uh, the clock generation the clock source will send the clock edge at 0 nanosecond over here but it will reach the launch flop and the capture flop after this buffer delays only Th this is how this is the best way to interpret this okay so let's call this 1 plus 2 this 1 plus 2 which is present over here let's call it as delta 1 okay and the delta 1 is nothing but your launch flop clock network delay because this is the, the the delta one is the time required for the clock to reach from the clock endpoint to the launch flop clock clock pin and and this let's call one plus three plus four as delta two and delta two is the time required for the clock edge to reach from this point to the capture flop clock endpoint so what we'll do is since i'm running a bit late out of time we'll look into a more pictorial representation of delta one and delta two using this particular timing graphs so let's try to bring the timing graphs and let's visualize the delta one and delta two in the next video thank you